Symbolic dynamics is how we were able to prove or control chaos in various one-dimensional maps. Let's take some time, revisit how we did that in order to prepare for working with the horseshoe. Our first example of symbolic dynamics came in the context of the doubling map. Remember this coming from the geometric Lorentz attractor? This was a one-dimensional, non-invertible map of the interval, something of the form xn plus 1 equals f of xn, where f of x was 2x mod 1. Now, this was really nice. We were able to build symbolic dynamics for this how. If we think about f acting on the interval from 0 to 1, then we could translate this into dynamics on symbol sequences, where we take the set of digits, 0, 1, raise it to the power of the natural numbers. And then what f corresponds to is the shift map, where you move the decimal point one place to the right, forget the first digit. Now this correspondence, this topological conjugacy, allowed us to take any point x in the interval and equivalently replace it with a symbol sequence with a string of digits, a naught, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, where each digit, let's say the nth digit, a sub n, is either a 0 or a 1. And it was a 0 precisely when the nth iterate of x lies in the interval from 0 to 1 half. It was equal to 1 precisely when the nth iterate of x lies in the interval from 1 half to 1. Now what was so nice about the doubling map and the way that we couched it originally is that these symbol sequences, these itineraries, correspond precisely to the binary decimal expansion of x. That made total sense because if you double a binary decimal, then what you're doing is you're shifting the decimal place over one point. When you take that mod 1, it means you're forgetting what that first digit was. Okay, that is really swell. Every point in the interval has this itinerary, this address, that encodes its future. If we think about that interval from 0 to 1, then it breaks up into two subintervals split at a half. The left half, all the points in there have itineraries that begin with a zero, and then there's a bunch of other stuff. On the right, all of the itineraries of those points begin with a one, and then you've got a bunch of other stuff. Now we can keep going iteratively. I can break that left interval into two subintervals. I can break the right interval into two subintervals. And these tell you about the first two digits of the symbol sequences. In order from left to right, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And if you keep going, breaking up into smaller and smaller subintervals, then what you're doing is you're specifying more and more digits in the itinerary that's telling you more and more about where you're going to be after n doublings. And if you write down all the symbol sequences, if you just keep going, then you've got a unique address for your point. Now, the way that we set this all up in terms of binary decimals, well, that's not really the important thing. It's kind of a coincidence that is tailored to the fact that this map is a doubling map. It's not what really matters. What really matters is the way in which this itinerary encodes the future, that we've split up the interval into two regions, the zero region and the one region. And just by keeping track of whether you're in zero or in one at any particular time, that tells you how to construct your itinerary. And that in turn gives you a unique representation of your point in terms of these symbol sequences. Now compare and contrast what we did with the tent map. Recall the tent map. This also was a one-dimensional non-invertible map 
something of the form xn plus 1 equals f of xn, where now this function is not a doubling function. It's a continuous function. It's kind of like uh, doubling and then uh, orientation reversing doubling. So f of x is 2 times x if x is between 0 and 1 half, and it's 2 minus 2 times x if x is between 1 half and 1. Now what's cool about the tent map is it also has a full symbolic dynamics where I can take that map of the interval, I can take the shift map on the space of symbol sequences with digits and 0 and 1, and I can build a perfect correspondence, a topological conjugacy, where to every point x in the interval, I assign a symbol sequence, a naught, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, keep going, where the nth digit, a sub n, is either a 0 or a 1. It's a 0 if the nth iterate of x lies in the interval from 0 to 1 half. It's a 1 if the nth iterate of x lies in the interval from 1 half to 1. It's the same process, but without any of that binary decimal expansion stuff. What matters is how you build these itineraries, these symbol sequences, how we get the correspondence from x to these digits, a naught, a 1, a 2, a 3, keep going, keep going. That first digit encodes the present. The next digit encodes where you're going to be tomorrow. And then as you keep going, these digits are telling you more and more about your future later in time, where everything depends on which half of the interval you are in, either the left, 0, or the right, 1. So, for example, that first digit tells you whether you are on the left-hand side of the interval or the right-hand side of the interval. Now, we could, just as with the doubling map, break things up. I could break each of these half intervals again in half, and I've split up my domain into quarters. Now, these quarters tell you the first two digits of your itineraries. But notice what happens. Moving from left to right, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, then 1, 1, and 1, 0. This does not operate by binary decimal expansion. Rather, it tells you or encodes what points in these subintervals are doing under the map, where you are, left or right, as a function of time. And because the tent map is different than the doubling map, this addressing is not the same. Okay, fine. So we've got our doubling map, we've got our tent map, we've got symbolic dynamics for both of these. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that the itinerary, the symbol sequence, is based on this coarse partitioning of your domain into two pieces, labeled 0 and 1. Why is that the moral of the story? Ah, that is the moral of the story because of how we're going to apply this to the horseshoe map next.